We've got a couple of slides that I'll just flick through and then we can show you in the software as well. Um, it's obviously really early days. We only had the models last uh, yesterday evening or yesterday afternoon. Um, so you know, forgive us for the, uh, the fact that we haven't QA'd anything and we've just really tried to run it through the system to show you essentially what we can do with um, Vico Office, the product that we use. Um, our contact details, feel free to get in touch if you've got any questions, but I'll share this recording afterwards as well. Um, the basics are that we take the geometry from those Revit models from the three options and we take quantities from them and we can then price them based on the resource use uh, and that's what we've done in this example. We've got assemblies and components that have got um, formulas in that derive quantities of labor hours and material, hour, material amounts uh, from the elements that you've given us in the Revit models and then we've got rough unit pricing um, that can be obviously updated. Then we divided the building um, or the buildings into floors and can be divided further into locations um, for zones, for splitting slabs, etc. And we then use those quantities by location to drive the schedule. And as a result of putting logic between the tasks, we get all of the byproducts from this process. So the obviously the resulting schedule, uh, we can view it and optimize the schedule. We use a uh, a location-based method which enables us to see all the waste and uh, have opportunities to optimize resources and force continuous work and things like that that we can show you. We get the cash flow profile because we have obviously the cost uh, broken into the different locations over time. Um, we also get resource demands as far as the labor resources and also procurement for material demands as well. So this is the kind of the secret process uh, that Vico Office uses and that's what we did with the files that you provided. Vico Office is a modular system and it's broken down into pretty much what you can see on the screen now. The essence is that we use building information models um, or virtual construction 3D data to generate us a better, more accurate um, and more frequent releases of cost and time uh, information and allows us to track and control that in the field. So essentially we are able to take models, do a clash detection, do a quantity takeoff, use those for cost planning, use those quantities for cost planning, explore the costs as they change, break the building into locations so that we can use quantities by location for the scheduling, and then have a full reporting um, backup so that we can create cut and slice um, very customized reports. So this is the process that we'll take you through. Um, these were the options, the three different models you can see and uh, created over the last few weeks, I uh, understand, or days um, from the teams that are working on this BIM storm. And we literally published all three of these models into Vico Office. And um, as soon as you publish and activate them in Vico Office, you get in the next step a full quantity takeoff. So all of the elements that have been um, created in that 3D model are actually created, creating a list of what we call takeoff items, which are the names here that you can see the exterior metal panel wall and a whole series of quantities underneath them that can then be used in the cost planning process and in the scheduling process. So, so just on that point, we used a bit of uh, artistic license, if you like, and we renamed some of the families um, from Revit, which create these names. Um, just so they were a bit structured between the three different models. Yeah, we, we found that there were um, you know, a, an eight inch wall or six inch wall and um, there were a few different naming conventions. So we just tied them together and then this naming convention ties in with our knowledge base very nicely. Uh, so 87 walls and then you can see the surface areas on both sides. Uh, you can see top surface area, bottom surface area, obviously the volumes, etc. Um, this information is then used to drive the cost information, cost data. So the screenshot you see here, you've got three, a three-way view within Vico Office where we activated one of the model options, we had a quantity takeoff for that model, and that quantity um, list is then used in our cost plan to essentially drive quantities into these lines and 
multiply by a, a unit cost, you can add waste and consumption factors and really go to town on the estimate. But the basic um, is that you get quantities multiplied by a cost rolled up to give you a total price for the project. So this is the process for cost planning. And this is a more detailed view of that cost plan. Uh, the cost planner interface is very much like an Excel table, but it's got a power of a structured database behind it as well. Something that, um, and, and this is a real you know, information, but obviously the unit rates, as Ian would say, maybe um, need refining, and we haven't gone through the QA, QC process on that. Any comment? Yeah, I, I just put some assumptions in to get us to a figure, and this is where, uh, depending on how you want to develop this, um, if you can give me more information and feedback on this, then we can build up a more detailed estimate to uh, however you want to have. Yeah, and, and guys, I think, I mean, for the purposes of the BIM storm, this this already is great. Um, you know, it's it's more about illustrating the potential of what we can do rather than getting, you know, real accurate data. Okay. So this is this is cool. this is great. Cool. Yeah. And, and it's broken down in uniform at classification, um, and then underneath each element level, you've got the CSI master format, and then beneath that, you've got the resources as well, which aren't unrolled in this uh, screenshot, but gives you a, a a way of combining lots of data. And one of the things when you're working with owners as well is that they might have their own costing system, um, costing control system. So. We can actually add as many different columns in this data set as you like, and we can tag them with the owner's classification system as well and report using that whilst also containing uh, com combining your own classification and coding system as well. So that's something that um, makes it easier to work with owners. The, the other thing that makes it easier to work with owners is the target costing. Um, we just defined a, a target cost for the high level um, of the cost plan, and we can use that for target cost driven design, uh, understanding the differences between options and making sure that we're, whereas we're designing it, all of the elements, quantities multiplied by the cost that we've got in our cost plan are in line with our original targets, so the buckets of cash that we have allocated. And that's using this uh, three way view, we're able to share the cost changes between versions and each of these nodes is one of those buckets of money compared to its uh, previous assumptions or compared to a previous version. Um, and here we can see two different options that are active at the same time. So you can see the difference between uh, one option and another option. The red means that we're over budget. The green means that we have actually um, come within our target. So you can see in this example um, where the exterior facade is over budget in version. I'm not sure what option that was in, but um, one of the options and then compared to the target with the second option, we're actually within budget. So you can start to really share this information very well. And when you click on one of these nodes, you can see the elements will isolate. So you can see where the quantities are driving that cost and also where the costs are in the cost table. So this will actually filter for you. So it can really give the designers a lot faster feedback through the process. Um, you know, a, lot, a lot more uh, effectively, more accurately, uh, and more frequent than uh, the traditional process, and enable the, the target cost-driven design um, to try and avoid the value engineering that you normally get in a normal process. Right. Yep. And then the whole system has uh, an absurdly powerful reporting capability that can be customized to your heart's content, um, showing you for example, you know, pie charts of cost distributions, uh, full tables of your cost plan, so they can be emailed as PDFs directly from the system, um, shared with the clients. Also being able to compare different versions, so we showed two different options there, and here you can see option two versus option three, and you can see the first um, the graphical cost comparison, I'm not sure whether we've got the quantity comparison as well, but this is just a standard way of comparing each of the buckets, um, the, or each of the um, classifications or even elements, I think in this example, where the quantities and costs have changed between the two different options. So we can see it in a graph and we can also see it in a table as well. So this is option one versus option two and where the variances are. So we can see some areas we've uh, increased. So the roof slab uh, has, has increased in cost by 
um, the increase in quantities, so gone from 29,000 in, in um, this option to uh, 38,900 in, in this option. And then the difference in cost is that it's increased by 265,000. Some areas have gone down, so we can start to use these uh, reporting capabilities to understand you know, which options might be the best. So guys, does this, does this compare between different just different versions of the same model, or can you actually compare? Um, it's either. Say you were, it, yeah, yeah, whichever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I actually did was we put all three models into one project as if they were a design development, or you know, just to, uh, to weigh up the options. And I did each project separately, and then give that as a project version, and that's what we're comparing. So we can compare anything basically, any two projects against each other. Okay, and against great. target costs. And then once we've got, so this screenshot shows you the estimate that Ian had built up on the right hand side and the left hand side shows us our hierarchy of tasks for the schedule and we associate the cost line items with their quantities and with their resource assumptions, so the number of resource hours assumed in that cost we associate that assembly with a specific task. So in this example, we've got the reinforcement steel for the slab, um, one of the floor slabs, dragged into the rebar to floor slab task, and that generates us an amount of man hours that we would then use in the schedule so that we can always have a completely integrated and synchronized estimate and schedule at the same time. And it really does help our scheduling as well. So it means that we get a really good starting point for, for the schedule. Um, and it means also that sometimes we'll find items in the estimate that maybe we hadn't allowed for in the schedule. So they'll be remaining over here. You can see the, the ones that we have assigned are grayed out. The ones that we haven't assigned yet are the uh, bold. And we can ident identify areas of missing scope in either the estimate or the schedule where we have one remainder left over uh, but no task to associate it with it or no cost line item to associate with an existing task. We then, as you saw in the first workflow, we break the building into locations. This is just simplified into uh, the stories that will tally with all buildings. So seven different discrete floors may be um, broken down. We can change this very easily. We can also put zones in as well. So on each floor, we could break that down into zones. And as I mentioned, that will virtually split um, in a non-destructive way the slabs if they were to cross them and um, if we wanted to pour them in different pour zones. Then we define the schedule. So this is a, a screenshot showing um, the information going into the schedule and very high level, substructure, superstructure, exterior, interior, MEP going in. This is just a summary view, so we've got a lot more detailed tasks, as you saw in the previous view. Um, also resource demand, um, the Gantt chart, and what we call the flow line as well. This is the location-based management view, something that um, is really designed for construction uh, and able to identify areas where there's maybe poorly utilized locations, whereas we don't see the locations in the Gantt chart. So it's a really a way of um, in incorporating lean scheduling uh, into the construction planning and also the controlling phase. Um, and because we've got cost tied in with the tasks now over time, we've also got cash flow profiles as well. So um, as we mentioned, this data might not be uh, very accurate right now, but it um, is ready to be refined. So as far as the durations are going, the resource levels, etc., uh, we can very much tailor that and start to optimize it now that we've got the integrated data. Um, once we've gone through that process, I mentioned that the 4D simulation is a byproduct. So essentially, uh, we can then come back and hit play, and it will start playing our simulation. So there's no tying of um, elements to tasks on a on a Gantt chart um, because of the integrated workflow using a 3D model to drive quantities into costs into into tasks. This comes as a byproduct, so we can just play a 4D simulation from that. Doesn't look very pretty right now because it's um, you know obviously just boxes, but um, we can show you that as well. And then being able to refine in both the Gantt chart and the flow line view, so we can start to see 
areas where um, we can possibly um, bring things sooner and start to optimize our resource use so that we have continuous work for everyone um, and have the, the most optimum plan. And that goes deeper and deeper. So in this data set that we've created um, in this short time, we've, we've even got um, all of the uh, production information. So how many, uh, what the production rate is and what the number of man hours are for each one of these tasks. Uh, and if you open up the hierarchies, you can see that in each location as well. Really detailed information ready to refine. So what we would be able to do with the system is to have um, lots of different options. These are just made up numbers, but um, uh, a cost for option one, option two, option three, a schedule duration. We've also got risk analysis um, and uh, we can have cash flow profiles for each one of those options so that you can identify the differences between them. And try what if scenarios. Um, you know, what if on option two we, we change you know, this facade to um, an, another different type or we increase the um, glazing area um, on this option. So we can do um, addendums to the major options that you've got defined already. Um, just showing uh, a cash flow profile and uh, also I mentioned the risk analysis as well. So we can do Monte Carlo risk analysis. Here you've got um, the task that we had in the schedule just assigned with a, a low, intermediate, high. Um, these got, have got, they're tied to a specific um, detailed risks and then running a simulation Monte Carlo risk analysis we can get the probability of finishing on time or the probability of the watertight uh, deadline being met and things like the distributed cash flow as well. So what the cash flow profile, um, what the risk is to the cash flow profile. So that, that was kind of running through what we were able to do. Um, does that um, seem useful? I, I think that seems uh, really, really interesting and really useful. Um, I wish we had more time with the with the BIM storm to explore the full capabilities of it. 